Oh, Joey, show me that adorable baby that we made together. He sure is a looker, isn't he? What the fuck is that? I don't think it's mine. Hello, I am Robert. And I am Joey, here to present to you Eraserhead, 1977, directed by David Lynch. You guys have heard of David Lynch, right? I, I would hope. But the bare bones of this movie would be... <clears throat> What the fuck did I just watch? I kind of feel the same way. But if you want to get particular, it's about a guy named Henry Spencer who has a really stupid hairdo. Like I, like I did try to do my hair like his has got its boofed up, way big, huge bouffant. But anyway, it's black and white. He lives in some sort of industrial nightmarish world. Uh -huh. He's got a angry, crazy girlfriend, and and I and and they have a they have a a a deformed love child child together, which does not. It's just let's just say it's really deformed. Uh -huh. Now, I can identify with part of that. Why something about you is a little deformed? Engorged, more likely. So David Lynch, what's he done? He's done a crap ton of stuff. Blue Velvet. Twin Peaks It's really the first thing that comes to mind mm -hmm. to me, Twin Peaks. And he likes to use the same actors over and over again in his stuff. Mm -hmm. The main, the guy that plays Henry in this movie is played by uh, Jack Vance, is the actor. And he's been in almost everything else. That yeah. uh, David Lynch has done. I don't think he's been a main character in any of the other ones. No, he's just supporting, I think. Yeah, they must be very good friends. Jack Vance plays this Henry character with the weird hair. And um, it's a... I'm going to say it's disturbing. Mm-hmm. For sure. A lot of people say David Lynch based this movie on the time... He spent a lot of time living in Philadelphia... In a really bad section of town. So I would classify this as experimental slash avant-garde. Oh, for sure. I would totally agree that it's experimental. And if you go into it thinking it's going to be a total narrative film, you're going to absolutely hate it. You need to kind of like that sort of avant-garde genre. But unlike some other avant-garde pieces of crap that I've seen... This one does have a plot that runs through it. So a lot of it, to me, strikes of, I'm going to stick this weird stuff in here, and that'll just pe make people scratch their head. Like, the plot is bizarre enough, but I think he's putting in extra stuff, like having a conversation with, uh, you know, his girlfriend's mother at one oh point. Oh, my God. And she's, kind of, she's having a very serious conversation. Oh, you know, what are your intentions? She's had a baby. The baby's at the hospital. And then, the and then goes in for a makeout Yeah, session. like she starts licking his neck yeah. or something. And the girlfriend, at least twice, just like starts screaming for no, really no reason and like breaking down. And Fun fact, Stanley Kubrick actually watched Eraserhead in order to get in the mood. Get in that, that creepy, peculiar mood in order to film... 1980s The Shining. Do you know how long this took to film? I know it was supposed to take six weeks, but... It actually took almost five years. He kept running into uh, technical scheduling and budgetary issues. So they would start and stop production repeatedly. There's one scene where Jack Vance gets up off of, I think, his bed and goes to open the door mm -hmm. and then they open the door and then they show a, a reverse of him opening the door. 18 months went by between those two shots. So his wife helped him maintain 
this bouffant hair. I, I mean, she didn't do this every day, but she would like fluff it up and make it pile it up oh, on top of his oh. head. And so he, he never cut, he didn't cut his hair or he kept it the same length so he could do this weird thing. And you know, sometimes when filmmakers don't have like the best equipment in the world and they're shooting low bid, low, low budget. I have excellent equipment. God. Just saying. They need to make up for that with really odd material to grab people's attention. This movie, I would say, is sort of the quintessential surrealistic. That's hard to say. Mm. Say it with me. Surrealistic, surrealistic movie. Like, people think, like, what's well, a really weird movie that I could show my friends? Pick this one. Let's do lines from the movie. Mother, they're still not sure it's a baby. Which, honestly, this this thing looks like E.T. took a trip to Chernobyl. Yeah, I'm not sure it was a baby either, but... Mm -mm. Uh, and then he he says this a couple times. It's like They're like, well, what do you do for a living? And he's like, oh, I'm on vacation now. It's mostly silence with sound effects and background sound and laid over the silence. And crying of this oh, God, that baby little alien. Cries all the goddamn time. Mm. Time to rate this film with a pumpkin rating. I want to give it four, but... I would agree. We'll give it four. Four pumpkins, because it's a it's a classic. It's a cult classic. If you're interested in filmmaking, you really ought to watch it, because for such a weird film, it wound up really just doing spectacular things. Yeah, for the just... for the writer director. Um, yeah, shot well. Four. Maybe if there was a bosom alert. I don't know whose bosom I would want to see in this, frankly.